Hey everyone, geophysicist Stefan Burns here. Back in July of 2023, solar astronomers observed something extremely bizarre occurring on the sun. Specifically, they were looking at the solar corona, the outermost atmosphere of the sun, which contains the most highly vibrational and high temperature plasma in millions of degrees Kelvin. They're focused on a coronal loop, just like we see here during a solar explosion, an X-class flare, and they had these extremely high resolution optics. And they noticed this bundle of plasma called a plasmoid moving through this coronal loop, undulating and stretching and contracting in ways that we have never seen before. And looking at this imagery, it's almost like this solar plasmoid has a life of its own. The movement is strangely reminiscent of that of like, let's say an amoeba exploring its environment. And so the highly speculative question that we have today is, is this the first evidence that we've ever captured of a solar plasmoid organism? Now we just recently found very strong evidence of there being microbial life in the past on Mars based off of some mineralogical and geologic data. And perhaps there's actually life spread out across the solar system on comets and asteroids and moons and the other planets and trans-Newtonian dwarf objects and perhaps life is everywhere. We don't know. But is there life on the sun? And if that is the first evidence of a solar plasmoid organism, then that completely blows open our current understanding of what life is similar to some of the other quantum leaps of understanding that have occurred across time specifically, like the theory of evolution first proposed by Charles Darwin in the middle of the 19th century or going back further to the middle of the 17th century, the first observations of microbial life due to the invention of the microscope. Are we right now on the cusp of a similar revolution in understanding of what life is? And is the sun teeming with solar plasmoid organisms and who knows what else? Well, let's get right into it. Now, all these videos and a lot more information can be found in the research paper that I've linked in the video description where these solar plasma physicists released their findings. I wanna make it clear that they did not at all make any assertions or claims that this is a solar plasmoid organism. This is a speculation of my own that we are exploring in today's video, but I still recommend you read that paper to get the details of their findings because they do say it's quite odd and anomalous to see this sort of behavior and it was unexpected to say the least. So here we see four different views of the sun. This is a super high resolution one there. You see this solar plasmoid right there and watch how it moves through this box. It first like is bundled up and then it stretches out and reforms again and then it kind of fades off. Very, very bizarre. And plasma has these very strange properties to it. It has this ability to form these ordered structures and stay self-coherent and also in some aspects explore its environment. We've found a lot of this evidence through laboratory experiments with plasma and complex dusty plasma. We see the other views of the sun here. These are lower resolution though you can kind of make it out. We'll check out a bunch of videos from that was released by these researchers, but you can see just how high quality this is compared to our traditional views of the sun due to the solar dynamics observatory that's run by NASA. So because of these extremely high resolution optics, we were able to look at these coronal loops in exquisite detail and pull out these features that normally we would never see. So let's look at a different frame, which allows us to better characterize this plasmoid so we can perhaps understand what the heck it is that we're looking at. And here we have a series of still high resolution images of this solar plasmoid across time. I want you to notice two things. First off the scale there at the bottom, zero kilometers there, 9,000 kilometers across, and then the time. This is 1848 universal time going all the way to 1854. So we go down like this, next column, next column there. This is all observed on July 18th of 2023, by the way. So here we see our solar plasmoid. It's a pretty loose bundle, about 3000 kilometers across, seems to start to undergo this rotation where it then stretches out, almost like it's feeling out into its environment. It does have this kind of central body to it, 
But then at one point, it reaches nearly about 9,000, 10,000 kilometers across before it then continues to move through this coronal loop, rebundling up here, getting quite a bit smaller. Maybe it's about 1,500 kilometers across there, then poof, it's gone. Now, I find this fascinating because A, this occurred over such a fast time frame, just about five, six minutes, and also the distances involved. This is 9,000 kilometers right there with our scale. So let's make it 10,000 kilometers to make it simple. Well, what we see across the universe is that there's a fractal nature to reality. We also see scale invariance often. For example, the lightning strikes that occur on the Earth in terms of their energy density it's almost exactly scale invariant to the energy density of a neural spike within the skull. So you see these similar resonances that manifest in reality across time. And it's very, very uh, striking. So is there a scale invariance here? Well, I did the math. So the sun is 1.4 million kilometers across. And this is at its greatest extent, let's say, 10,000 kilometers. That's 140 times smaller than the diameter of the sun. And in fact, that 10,000 kilometers is almost the diameter of the earth. It really puts things into context. Now this right here is about 1,500 kilometers across, but to keep the math simple, let's make it 1,400 kilometers. Well, 1.4 million kilometers divided by uh, 1,400 kilometers is 1,000 times smaller. So you take the human body and let's take someone that's two meters tall, which is quite tall, but two meters tall and you divide by 140 and you get about 1.4 centimeters or so. And then if you take that 1000 times smaller figure, you get two millimeters. So we have this solar plasmoid, maybe even call a solar plasmoid organism, being scale variant to something that's about two centimeters to two millimeters in size in relation to the human body. Well, a typical amoeba is about 0.2 to 0.3 millimeters across. So it's off by one order of magnitude. It's not perfectly scale invariant uh, as it relates to an amoeba to the human body and this plasmoid to the sun, but it's pretty darn close. And considering the size of this, there can be a whole bunch of these plasmoids all across the surface of the sun. And you have to keep in mind, this was observed with our latest high resolution solar optics. But maybe in 20, 50 years, who knows how far down the line, our solar optics will be so much more advanced that we can resolve details within just a thousand kilometers, maybe even a hundred kilometers or 50 kilometers or 10 kilometers. Who knows what sort of interesting plasma structures we'll observe then. The moment you go from this scale here of zero to 9,000 to zero to 900 kilometers, now you have scale invariance between this plasmoid on the sun and some sort of amoeba to the human body. So I think there's something very profound about this, how it moves through its environment and then contracts and everything. Let's give that video a look one more time. Here we see a sequence of views from the Solar Dynamics Observatory, and we see a close-up on this solar plasmoid. And just look at how it moves. It's so bizarre. It just looks so strikingly similar to that of an amoeba. The biggest difference is that it just seems to disappear at the end. And so that could be why uh, if this is some sort of novel life form for going that direction that we would need to redefine our understanding because you don't see amoebas moving through their environment and then just disappear unless their cell breaks and they leak into the environment. But with plasma, these sort of things can combine together. They can uh, stay self-coherent for a while. They can then all of a sudden merge into different larger plasmoids and plasma structures. So there's this kind of cooperative aspect to plasma that is very, very unique as it relates to normal life that we observe here on Earth. Of course, we often see life express itself in very unique ways. There are sometimes algae living within different microbes. And for example, within our own bodies, we have mitochondria living within our cells. And these are almost like little cells on their own. So we do see that there is this kind of cooperative aspect in our own known animal kingdom. But this would completely redefine our understanding of life. And also the, the sheer size of it, 
10,000 kilometers across at one point. So, uh, but it has to necessarily bring in a new understanding of life based off of plasma. And also it would redefine our understanding of consciousness because there's no brain to this thing as we know it, right? It's completely unique and separate and different from anything that we have seen on Earth. So solar plasmoid, just, just something normal or solar plasmoid organism, you decide. But now let's look at some videos of amoebas so you can see the similarity. Here we have a video of an amoeba proteus. This is one of the most common amoeba found in the environment. And thanks to Dr. Ryan Wagner for this. This video is linked in the video description if you want to check it out. So this is a very common amoeba. Typical size is 0.2 to 0.3 millimeters across. You'll notice all these different organelles and things and structures within this amoeba. But remember, this is one single cell. Did speed this up a little bit. Here's our scale bar. This is 50 micrometers. So very, very tiny for the scale bar, but overall about 0.2, 0.3 millimeters across. Look at how it explores its environment. And we'll see some other examples too. But it kind of moves, contracts, and undulates, expands. We've seen uh, so many interesting things with microbes, how they can explore their environment in very unique, striking ways that are so reminiscent of that solar plasmoid, it just necessarily calls into question whether or not that is life because that's one of our main ways of identifying things in the first place is do they behave similarly, right? Is there some sort of shared expression of reality across different domains of reality? Are they tapping into some uh, more coherent uh, foundational underlying framework and building from that? Just like you can have the eye evolve in two different ways, right? The, the eyes that we have are evolved completely separate from the eyes that squids evolved, but they are very, very similar at the end of the day or how wings evolve multiple times. We, we see that. So you kind of take that model of understanding and apply it here and you can start to see how there could be solar plasmoid organisms and you bring in an understanding of plasma consciousness and now all of a sudden things start to make sense. Now you start to have, have to start to ask, does the sun have consciousness? Do the planets have consciousness, right? Is consciousness not just within the human body? Is it actually all around us? The answer is yes. So here is amoeba proteus. Let's look at another example so we can see one exploring its environment. And here we have a drop of pond water. There's an amoeba exploring whatever this is. We see a whole bunch of other stuff as well. And it's probably thinking, can I eat this? It's investigating it. And well, it decides that no, it can't eat that. So it starts to extend out to other parts of its environment to find perhaps other things to eat or explore. Notice how it's stretching out kind of like that solar plasmoid. And remember, this is a single cell. There's no brain. There's a nucleus and other stuff, but there's no brain. Yet you watch enough of these amoeba videos, for example, and you'll notice that these uh, microorganisms, they explore they have behaviors and they kind of show curiosity and they're exploring their environment and they're making decisions, yet they don't have a brain. How is that? There's even some microorganisms that are strangely reminiscent of, let's say, your household pet, cat or dog. Let's check it out. Here we have another single-celled organism, yet look at this. It's using its flagella to effectively walk around its environment. Now it looks a little bit more like a beetle or something like that than let's say your cat or dog, but it is certainly walking, yet everything is contained within that single cell. This is not multicellular. This is one single cell. There's no brain, right? There's another organs that we know of. There's organelles, but this very clearly demonstrates the fractal nature of life across different scales. And so if we have these sort of organisms down at this microbial scale and we have life on earth as we know it, like humans walking around doing our thing, why couldn't there be one jump up to plasma organisms? That's a question that I have. Now we wouldn't have these high resolution images and videos of the sun without absolutely groundbreaking equipment devoted to studying the sun. So the Big Bear Observatory in California is what gave us those super high quality videos and photos 
of that solar plasmoid and some of these other features. There's also the Daniel K. Inua Solar Telescope on the island of Maui, Hawaii. And this is the world's largest solar telescope with a four meter aperture. And it's getting super high resolution looks at the sun as well. Here we see a sunspot on the sun, super punched in, very high quality. Here's our scale bar there, the United States for reference. So without these groundbreaking solar telescopes, we wouldn't be able to make these observations in the first place. And it seems so similar to me about how we invent the microscope and all of a sudden we observe life for the first time at the microbial scale. And then perhaps now with the invention of these new solar telescopes at the highest resolutions ever uh, created, we are now observing solar plasmoid life at, for the first time ever. Who knows? But as we go further into the 21st century, we may have to completely rewrite the book on what life is because of these solar astronomical observations. And again, I want to make it very clear that these researchers which released all this data and wrote that research paper linked in the video description, they made no claims of observing a solar plasmoid organism. They just observed these unusual plasma characteristics, wrote about that in their paper, and that's it. This solar plasmoid organism speculation is purely our own that we've been exploring in the video. And well, I do think that there's something to it. I mean, just look at this coronal loop here. Look at how strange some of the movement and behavior of the plasmoid, uh, plasma is. Specifically also here where we get like this tower of plasma start to come up like this. It just almost seems intelligent. So I think that we may need to rewrite our understanding of what life and consciousness is. Certainly that is going to occur as we go forward in time. Uh, I think the ancient people knew a lot more about this than we give them credit. I will share one interesting story with you. I had a dream a couple of years ago of this very tall insectoid-like mantis-like creatures, like seven, eight feet tall, and looked like a praying mantis almost. And it was just very striking. I've never seen anything like this, you know, online or read anything like this in a book or something like that. It just came to me in a very vivid dream. I wrote down my dream journal. Then a few months later, I start reading the book Astrology for All, written by Alan Leo. And this is written back in the early, I think it was like early 1900s. In his introduction, he then specifically talks about how there are these mantis-like insectoid creatures that live on the sun. And I was blown away because he described them exactly like I saw them in my dream. And that was a clearly a precognition dream. Now, do those things actually live on the sun? I don't know, but very strange premonition that I had before I even read that book, I had this visualization in a dream of exactly what he described. And he wrote that back in the early 1900s and that's based off of a lot of esoteric wisdom. So take that for what's worth, but there are a lot more things happening in this universe than we currently know of. The life that we see here on Earth is very 3D and materialistic in quality, and life and consciousness is expressed across many more dimensions than just the 3D, and that is something that we are going to increasingly discover and quantify as we move forward. That is at least what I believe. So thank you all so much for watching. If you've been watching the video and wondering what this shirt is, this is actually some of the new channel merch. Explore the Cosmos Within it has the Fibonacci spiral on the front. It has the cosmic pyramids as painted by my father, Lee Burns, on the back. If you want to pick this up yourself, that is possible. It's available on the earthevolution.com website. I'm wearing the midnight blue here. It also comes in white. I absolutely love this shirt, 100% cotton, unisex. There's a whole bunch of stuff on the store, as you can see at www.earthevolution.com slash store. And you scroll down until you see this right here. And this is the latest merch for the channel. Uh, super comfortable, fits pretty true to size. I ordered a large, I'm wearing a large right here. I'm about six feet tall, just a little bit more than that. And it fits perfect. So if you'd like to pick this up, it's at earthevolution.com slash store. I highly recommend you check that out. And thank you all so much for watching. I'm wishing each and every single one of you well. Please write in the comments below what the heck you think that plasmoid 
is, whether it's just solar plasma doing weird things or whether it is something beyond our current understanding, I'd love to hear your thoughts and create a discussion on that. I'll see you all in the next video very soon. Take care, ciao.